Yes, sir. Okay. So, good morning to all of you. Good morning, sir. So, in the last uh, presentations, we went through some theoretical descriptions of this AR and the VR technology. We described about uh, these data clubs, and I informed that I will today I will just I will show you that uh, how the data clubs looks like. I will take some time, then I will arrange this one. And uh, then we discussed about the important applications of AR and the VR technology in the medical field. And uh, you can see that there are 20 clinical sectors that has been already identified and the people are working in this particular area. And uh, like uh, some important area, maybe for the surgical training purposes, physical rehabilitation purposes, pain and uh, pain management, Okay, and uh, then uh, sports medicine, cognitive training. So these are the important areas that has been identified by the medical, by the, uh, by the air VR developers in the field of medical field. And uh, these are the, what I say that the uh, applications of this air VR technology for the surgical purposes and the virtual, I means patients can be created and then virtual tools will be there and the operations of the virtual tools uh, through these operations of the virtual tools one can get the exposures that how the original uh, surgery operations can be performed on a patient then uh, i ended up with uh, this uh, virtual human uh, as a patient, uh, virtual human as a caregivers and the real patients, presence of the real patients and uh, for sharing of some information, of so sharing of uh, some problems, medical related problems, personal problems with the caregivers, where I have mentioned that the caregivers is basically a virtual model and the virtual model it gets all kind of informations from the human, from the real human, real patients. And uh, it understands the physical condition of the person as well as the mental condition of the persons. The way the doctors, they feel about the condition of the patient. So similarly, here also, there are so many sensors has been attached, uh, attached where the patient is, uh, patient is uh, situated. And you can see that different, uh, the patient's views are observed or the patient's views are captured by a camera unit. And basically uh, where the patient is uh, sitting. So at that uh, location, there is a 3D camera systems and the 3D camera can capture the, uh, capture the positions of the head and all the details of the, um, of the um, face like opening of the eyes, closing of the eyes, the motions, the leap motions, and uh, also the head movements. It can be captured and uh, it kept, uh, then uh, from the image, it tried to find out the different informations, the relevant informations regarding the uh, state of the persons, like uh, how, to, uh, to what extent the eyes are in the glazed positions, how quickly the head movements are taking place and how the person is bending, whether he is bending in the front on the back side directions or sometimes the patient, patient also bend in the right hand directions on the left hand directions. Okay, so this, uh, this informations are captured from the camera images and uh, from there, the caregivers, okay, uh, through its uh, AI based software tools can understand the situations of the persons, the mental situation of the person and accordingly the advice is provided. So I'm just showing you a video that how this is possible.
I'm just checking it. Hi, I'm Ellie. Thanks for coming in today. I this, was created this is visible in a safe and secure. The video is visible. I'm not a therapist, but I'm here to learn about people and would love to learn about you. I'll ask a few questions Hello. to get us started. And please feel free to tell me video is visible. Your answers are totally confident. No, are you okay, okay with this? Okay. Yes. Okay, this so how are you doing today? I'm doing well. That's good. Where are you from originally? I'm from Los Angeles. Oh, I'm from LA myself. Just a minute, I will. When was the last it. time you felt really happy? Uh, when was the last time? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm not someone who's really like, I don't have any real high highs. This is visible? I feel like I'm a level person. It's just. I have seen share. I guess to answer your question, probably, probably a couple months ago. I noticed you were hesitant Hello? on that one. Would you say you were generally a happy person? I'm generally happy. It's just lately there are. Hello. There are things It's keeping me down. Can you tell me more about that? When was the last time you felt really happy? Sir, I don't know. Okay. Okay. Uh, my kids keep me going. What advice would you have given yourself from years ago? Audio is audible. Um, not To your sound to 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 not be so gullible. To not be so gullible. Still, this is not visible. Hmm. Um, uh, other, rather than I, that, I've say, been told recently not your PDF, virtual humans for trading, confidential interactions and telemedicine support. That PDF is showing here without them having to prove. Sir, you unshare and, this content first uh, and yes. share the result, video um, file. I, uh, recently, I, that video file will I, be visible when you I've go to myself save. in a lot of trouble. Um, <laughs> And so I think that looking back, if I could have, I would tell myself um, to, to not believe, to not be so stupid um, and to think uh, and just, just not, to not be so gullible. Uh, Is it uncomfortable for you to talk about this? Um, yeah, it is. Uh, I. I hadn't really thought about that. This is visible right Hi. now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's visible now. Coming in today. I was created to talk to people in a safe and secure environment. I'm not a therapist, but I'm here to learn about people and would love to learn about you. I'll ask a few questions to get us started. And please feel free to tell me anything. Your answers are totally confidential. Are you okay with this? 
Yes. So, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. That's good. Where are you from originally? I'm from Los Angeles. Oh, I'm from LA myself. When was the last time you felt really happy? Uh, when was the last time? Hmm. So we can see the, uh, uh, yeah. the I'm not someone who's the really movement like, of the screen. I don't have any real high high. And you can see that also there is a marker move. I feel like I'm a level person. The marker it's is just... basically it is a box kind of marker. It's a three dimensional Happy. marker, which is tracking the uh, the movement of the question, of the face or the or the head movement. Probably. And probably there is a lot of. Uh, uh, sensory information is captured, like a horizontal gauge, vertical gauge, the right hand, uh, right side eye closing, generally the happy. left hand side eye closing, the speaking fractual, okay, mouth opening, mouth closing configuration, smiles things. level. So these are the these are the inputs that is together. captured either from the camera unit, or can you tell me more about uh, that? it can be also captured through the accelerometer readings. Uh, which the captures the movement of the really head happy. and accordingly the um, software is predicting the, but the personal state of um, the person I, i'd rather be happy and accordingly the advice uh, is provided by the virtual model what advice would you have given yourself 10 or 20 years ago um to uh to not believe uh to, to to not be so gullible, to not be so gullible. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've been told recently that I have a tendency to believe um, people too readily um, without them having to prove anything. And uh, so as, as a result, um, I, uh, recently I've, really, I, I've gotten myself in a lot of trouble. Um, and so I think that looking back, if I could have, I would tell myself um, to, to not believe, to not be so stupid um, and to think uh, and just not, to not be so gullible. Uh, Is it uncomfortable for you to talk about this? Um, yeah, it is. Uh, I, I hadn't really thought about that. So, uh, what we can find over here, the state of, uh, state of the condition, the mental condition of the two patients. And here you can see that at the bottom level, at the bottom, there is a, uh, there is a skeleton picture is there. And this skeleton picture, it captures the hand movement, the leg movements, and the head movement simultaneously. And uh, this is possible with the help of some Kinect-based camera, which is known as a three-dimensional camera, 3D camera. And uh, through that particular camera, it is possible to capture the, the, the body movements. And the body is basically divided. The total body is divided into a number of links and uh, including joints. So what we can find over here, that the total body structure is divided into a head and then the right hand and the left hand and the leg, right leg and the left leg. And it is made of a number of links and each one link is connected with the another links with some revolute joints. And uh, so what happens whenever the person is moving his head or the, or the leg portions or the hand portions. So that can be calculated from the uh, Kinect based camera. And uh, from there, it can find out that if there is too much of uh, head movements is taking place or if too much of leg movement is taking place or the hand movement is taking place. So that indicates a state of mind of the concerned person. So based upon that, the virtual model can give uh, some sort of remedial, uh, remedial suggestions 
for the improvement for the state of the mind of the person. So that is one application where the uh, AR VR technology is practically it is used. I think I'm sharing the screen and now the uh, presentation part is visible to all of you. Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, also in the last class, last presentations also we mentioned that uh, this uh, this technology can be used also for post traumatic stress uh, disorder. Okay, so finding out the state state of the mind or state of the health and uh, through this ear in the VR technology. So exposure based treatments can be conducted in the safety and the comfort of an office setting and effective tools for treating a variety of clinical problems in particular anxiety and the addictive disorders problems and fully immersive environment which in a, with the with include the uh, use of a head mounted display units 3d sound tactile simulations by shaking the platforms and then olfactory uh, stimulus so these are the uh, these are the technique which is used for this post traumatic stress disorder so finding out the state of the mind of the uh, in case of uh, there is a trauma uh, for the person also i mentioned that it can also be used for the pain destruction purposes and it has already been uh, found by the medical practitioners so interactive virtual environment significantly reduce the pain from such as 44% during the most of most of the painful procedures uh, uh, for example in case of a burn wound treatment purposes so if a patient is using some vr technology so at that time the person is deeply involved uh, with the virtual environment so that uh, he or she forgets about the the present state of mind of the persons and basically the pain is related to the mind so the if the mind is distracted and it is attracted towards something else then at that time the pain portion of the brain will be felt less in the agricultural field also this uh, this technology is used and one can see that uh, here there is a robot placed in a in a real environment a robot is placed but that also at the same time there is a virtual object placed and one can see the movement of a robotic tools whether the robot will be able to particularly reach to a uh, particular uh, destination points or not so that can also be found out through this air and the vr technology so here in one case, we can find that the machine is a real, okay, the robot is a real, really it is placed in a real environment and the rest of the things, the surrounding portions is a virtual one. And sometimes for the programming purposes, basically this, uh, this can be used for robotic programming purposes and the robot may be employed for uh, finding out the fruits, okay. And uh, uh, so, and then it can automatically pick up the fruits from the trees and then keep it in some other locations from the fruits, I means from the trees to some other locations. So for that purposes, whatever the program is, is required. So that programming can be, uh, can be written by the, by the person, okay, programmers, and he can verify it 
that whether that particular program will serve the purpose or not, whether the robot will be able to locate itself to a particular destination locations, which is, uh, which can be uh, visually, it can be verified, okay, and the program uh, can be finalized accordingly. So that is the uh, important area where this here and the VR technology is also used for the agricultural field. Now, next we come to this VR applications for industry 4.0. And uh, we find that this industry 4.0, it indicates the transformations and the rise of the new industrial digital technology, which makes gathering and analyzing the data across the various machines possible and resulting in the faster, flexible, and more efficient process. And this revolution has increased the productivity and fostered the industrial growth that changes the competitiveness of the companies and the regions. One of the great promises and at the same time, one of the main focus area of the industry 4.0 is the bridging the digital or the cyber or the virtual or the physical world and hence the focus on the cyber physical technology. The product design, virtual trainings, simulations, test with a focus on import, important assets, scenarios and the security aspects are the key area of this VR and the AR applications in the industry 4.0. So what we are witnessing right now, the industrial revolution, that is, uh, that is part of industry 4.0. So we have already witnessed the industry 1.0 and then industry 2.0, industry 3.0, and now we are industry 4.0. And practically we are moving towards more and more industrial operations okay so from the manual operations to the semi automatic operations now fully it is on automations full automations and uh, along with the uh, means uh, conversions of every aspects of industrial uh, industrial work in the form of digits or in the form of digital form and then uh, connecting all the devices systems equipment process um, in the digitally so that makes this industry 4.0. So the applications of the AR and the VR, uh, I think the main application side are there for AR, VR applications in the industry. Number one is the complex assembly kind of work. So for the training, basically for the training purposes, assembly training purposes, this AR, VR technology is used. So the modern manufacturing involves assembly uh, assembly hundreds of complex components in a short time with precision. And this augmented reality can help in these complex assemblies and the work uh, documents are generally in the PDF formats, which is difficult to get by. And the augmented reality can help to make them alive in the form of a video. So they are made uh, glanceable in the field of view, hands-free and the voice controlled. The instructions are broken down and the video can be added. All this can be seen through the AR glasses while workers keep on keep the hands on the task. So uh, when somebody is doing some sort of assembly work, if the assembly is a complicated one, so at that time the people need certain help. So this help can be provided by this, uh, this uh, augmented reality uh, systems. So here yeah, the video uh, will be uploaded and whenever the the person who is doing the assembly, he, he or she requires any kind of help or support, then the system will automatically upload that particular video. And he can go through the video and can understand the process properly and then take the necessary actions for the assembly purposes. Similarly, same, same thing for the maintenance work also. And after the assembly maintenance is another aspects where the augmented reality can play a crucial role. And sometimes uh, during this maintenance kind of work, the people require a kind of help and support from some experts, uh, those who have some um, knowledge about the particular machines for maintenance of the particular machines. <coughs> and this experience they have gathered, maybe, uh, maybe working on the systems for a last couple of years. And this knowledge needs to be transferred 
and uh, this knowledge transfer can take place through this ear vr systems so that after the assembly the maintenance is another aspects where the augmented reality can play a crucial role and currently most of the work that confirms the maintenance manually using a manual so generally whenever we do kind of maintenance kind of work always we take the help of a manual and this manual is basically as a hard copy of some documented copy and this process can be time consuming and not 100% error free and uh, company like mitsubishi electric they have already developed a technology which is maintenance support using this ear based on the 3d model so whenever a person requires a specific kind of help for assembly of uh, for maintenance of certain devices or systems or a component so at that time he can easily he can take the help of this augmented reality so within a just with a uh, within a click of uh, the fingers it is possible that maintenance related information will be available to the persons on the screen at the spot okay and uh, this would be enable the users to confirm that the order of inspections is followed and the inspection results can be added and more specifically the machine status can be checked only by glancing it through the ear glasses which can be a powerful maintenance tool expert support in the event of a disturbed manufacturing process an expert may need to travel to the work site and there may be a only a few experts are available so augmented reality can reduce this expense and can let an expert see the issue through the eyes of a technician okay so whenever the technician see the same thing so that informations can be immediately can be transferred to an expert and the expert can also can have the view of the same what the uh, what the technician is viewing and this can let them support and inspect from anywhere in the world so and uh, this can also guide the technicians about the future they may be interested in training purposes virtual reality helps the organizations to provide their employees with the real support uh, with the real surrounding virtuality and these drills are extremely safe uh, this uh, this training process these are extremely safe process and the training to eliminate the distractions like the humans noise and the other obstacles help the workers to focus on their work and increase the productivity and this training can also be help them to deal with the real time difficulties and now we understand during this covid time already i mentioned that industry people are giving the training to the trainers okay and uh, using this ear and the vr technology factory planning factory inspection purposes can also be used and uh, these are the some of the photographs which indicates that how this ear vr technology is used in uh, industrial sectors so the industry 4.0 it takes into account the areas like the big data blockchain artificial intelligence e commerce robotics internet of things by incorporating this ear and the vr with their workflow so this uh, two would definitely results into the bigger things so already in case of a in case of industry 4.0 um, generally we talk about this big data blockchain iot ai okay robotics industrial automations and iot but generally we talk less about this here in the beer uh, because uh, we can say that uh, this particular technology though it is used Uh, used uh, by the industrial people but it has not come in that way that it can be considered as a part of industry 4.0 maybe the maybe for the last 10 years the technology is growing and still the industry people they think that there is a further development is necessary so that it can be commercially used as a as a uh, as a uh, important component and the necessary components for industry 4.0 so manufacturing sector is it to modify low cost high efficient systems can be developed with the applications of this ear vr so the research has proved that most of us are practical learners and often acquiring 70% of our skill and the knowledge from the experimental learning so most of the cases we people are uh means uh, we are interested to learn from our practicals 
rather than from the theoretical as theoretical uh, from the bookish knowledge and however for most organizations on the job training programs these are expensive programs and time consuming programs logistically difficult to execute and often it involves a certain amount of risk also so if a person is supposed to get the training uh, training for working in a hazardous environment okay now before giving any training it will be next to it is impossible or it is not feasible uh, to employ the persons in a physically challenged area or dirty um, dirty areas difficult areas so that's why it is always it is necessary that the persons must be given proper training training uh, training uh, so that he can uh, he can learn about the process how we can take the protection or how we can uh, how we can uh, employ himself in that particular situations and then only the persons can take the adv adventure adventure of uh, uh, making himself or herself present in that kind of uh, critical situations so the virtual reality technology has smart solutions to help address these serious challenges virtual reality training is four times faster and more fa focused than the typical classroom training and it is also 3.75 times more emotionally connected with a 40% improvement in the confidence level so in case of a virtual training it has already been mentioned that it is four times faster than the classroom training and most of the cases this classroom training is a theoretical type of training and where a little bit of practical exposure to the experience is provided to the person in case uh, the person is given training with the help of this vr technology and it is 3.75 times uh, times more emotionally connected with parts of person percent improvement in the confidence level so this is also very important that emotional emotional attachment of the persons with the uh, physical field it is necessary to understand the the real environment and that is basically absent in case of a classroom training but in case of a virtual training okay the person is more exposed to a real life situations so that's why the training it's becomes a realistic almost it's becomes a realistic training and um it creates a lot of interest to the persons concerned persons to get the training proper training another impractical impactful change that the industry 4.0 brings is augmented reality simulation which is another great way to train the employees and improve its productivity organization can use these technologies to remotely accomplish train and achieve the certification goals of the trainees so before the trainees are inducted into the Uh, actual environment okay so um, generally uh, these trainings are provided and uh, practically speaking it is a very low cost training the investment from the industrial perspective is very very, very low less and uh, it's becomes a profitable one uh, so that whenever the persons gets after this virtual training and employees uh, gets entry into the organizations the performance of the persons is really uh, improved one so the ar applications in industry this is like a uh, top of the world 10% of the global manufacturing companies are uh, digital companies um, then digital Uh, champions create the value through the integrated customer solutions ecosystems digital champion serves as the customers by interacting so what we find over here that how means here the vr technology is helping the industry for making profit so we are in the midst of the massive change in the manufacturing and uh, how well the companies embrace and adapt to its uh, critic uh, to it uh, it is uh, crucial for their Uh, survival and one of the key underlying technologies for the industry 4 uh, is identified in uh, in the 2018 global digital operation study is augmented reality and one of the great promises and at the same time one of the main focus area of the industry 4.0 is bridging the gap uh, bridging of 
the digital cyber of the virtual and the physical world and hence the focus on the cyber physical systems so the virtual reality and the augmented reality can play a role in the typically earlier stages where the optimizations and enhanced productivity quality and quality speed flexibility these are all um, taken care future part is uh, basically we are going through this virtual reality then we are going through this augmented reality and now combined together virtual and augmented combined together so we are having a merged reality or sometimes it is also called as extended reality so what was means uh, what we see uh, right now okay and what uh, what is the technology technological development of ar and the vr so um, practically the vr was developed and then ar has been uh, in uh, has been further improved and the the different states these are provided over here you can see the different situations today and then soon and then the future okay so so vr in case of today is a vr mostly a 3d of lower resolution videos and the games they are attached over here and uh, then in case of soon we will have a vr systems with the ability, ability to move around through the live events with better sense of presence so these are all considered as a live events type and then in the future the entire screens like entertainment events this can be assessed with your mobile phone ear devices that are so realistic and interactive that they will be nearly indistinguishable from the realities and the vr becomes an occasionally used mode of mode with the ear systems <clears throat> ear systems vr systems they are employed means they are used and at every stages by the people like children they are also using young and adult people are using families for communication purposes this technology is used professionals are working or they are using it for uh, for solving their professional problems or explaining their professional fields and then fitness enthusiastic striving so that is also another kind of um, uh, systems okay so where the virtual reality people virtual reality person is encouraging the people who are uh, who are taking some sort of uh, fitness exercises and uh, ultimately it improves the performance of the people this is a kind of uh, er systems which uh, will revolutionize the industries and the enterprise increase its productivity efficiency and its safety so this is the basically the device okay so head mounted type of devices which are used uh, in this ear and the vr technology and already it has been mentioned that uh, few of the fields like industrial manufacturing cell sector then the healthcare education military purposes engineering purposes retail marketing emergency response so these are the field where uh, this ear vr technology is used how this means in most of the cases we find that this restriction is basically the restrictions from the computational power okay. and previously if you see that uh, then tv or the desktop computing system was used then uh, then how the technology camera unit laptop smartphone handheld gaming devices and ultimately all is connected now towards the ear glasses or the vr head mounted display units so more and more technology is becoming flexible handheld type of devices are used and uh, more intelligent type of display devices are coming into the picture this is the head mounted display units and uh, what are the uh, different features a head mounted display unit supposed to have okay so the system what we can say that uh, this system this kind of system is already it is existing in the market 
and uh, like it uh, it has a number of camera units like a rear camera unit directional speakers tracking and recording camera inertial systems haptic environmental and health sensors then ultra bright led display units multiple then high sensitivity audio microphones eye tracking devices uh, light sensors okay and multi mode connectivity 4g 5g so these are the what i say that these are the uh, these are the features uh, which are included in a head mounted display unit to more to make it a more realistic uh, more more and more realistic head mounted display units and people are working in this particular directions and they are adding more and more sensors and uh, along with that okay actuators are used small actuator systems are used um, which will give some sort of uh, information say for example the touch informations okay or uh, say for example the pressure informations so that can be given with the help of some uh, some actuating units so this head mount display unit or the camera units will have a uh, actuator small uh, intelligent type of actuators based upon some smart materials okay which can acts as a sensors as well as uh, actuator units it can be added with these uh, glass systems to make it a more effective one i was telling that um, like uh, say for example we are developing this ar and the vr technology and sometimes it may find that uh, uh, generally uh, whenever somebody is watching some sort of uh, Mm, uh, tv systems and somebody tips okay in most of the cases in a real real form the entry of the person is in front of the of the tv setup or uh, it should be entered it, it should be appeared uh, say for examples before the wall uh, clock okay and uh, so sometimes what happens you can find that if the virtual reality systems is not properly mapped then it may happen that the entry that the that the location of the persons uh, the physical locations of the persons it can show behind the screen which is uh, practically speaking which is not a uh, realistic uh, picture so the ar vr systems must be an intelligent one and it should understand the depth information it should have a depth information and based upon the depth information the location of the person should be placed either it may be in front of the uh, of the display units or if it is practically if the person has to enter uh, back side of the tv okay um, so in between the space uh, which is available in between the wall and the tv then really the face portion of the person should be should not be visible one so uh, this is possible only when the depth informations about the location of the persons inside the room is uh, is available then only practically speaking it is possible to uh, make the realistic uh, virtual environment like this should be the actual uh, actual location of the persons so a person is entering into the room and everything is in the form of a virtual only the entry of the person is the real entry of the person is a realistic real one and the system should show the presence of the person in front of the tv set or in front of the of the wall clock some lighting also means uh, light lighting in the virtual environment is uh, practically speaking it plays a very important role and um, in most of the cases the cad systems the software it does not take care about the lighting part okay but if we if we wants to make a, a virtual environment realistic virtual environment then the lighting plays an important role and in which direction the light is focused so only the objects which are located at that particular locations may be visible and rest of the things may not be visible at all so otherwise what happens now uh, now in most of the cases the all the items in a room it will it shows a similar kind of brightness which may not be practically uh, which is not true so the correct lighting considers the position intensity and the orientation of all the light sources so one has to take care in case of a virtual uh, virtual reality the location of the light source 
is the position of the light source, the intensity of the light, the orientation of the light, it plays an important role. And accordingly, the screen of the environment must be lighted. So the proper air environment processing, virtual objects look real and the correctly placed. So the location of the virtual object, it must be located correctly. And dynamic lighting, okay. So correct for the environment, solid objects look solid. Metallic materials look like physically correct and interactively, interactivity is smooth. So these are all um, what I say that the high end um, virtual reality systems and the people are working on this kind of systems. Creating the virtual sound based on the real world, like sound reflection systems, uh, spread and interact with the environment appropriately. So in case of an airport, the sound systems which we experience is something different than what happens in a conference room or maybe in the hotel room. Okay, so depending upon the depending upon the virtual environment, where the actual virtual environment is located, whether it is the virtual environment is located in the airport or if it is located in a conference room or the virtual environment is located in a hotel room. So depending upon that, the sound system should operate. Okay, so the sound system should not be uh, should not be uniform in all the situations. So that is uh, that makes uh, the realistic sound systems, and the people will feel uh, feel uh, uh, feel in the form of a real that uh, that he or she is now located maybe in the airport or maybe located in the hotel room or maybe located in the conference room. And there should be a multiple sound. Okay. So from different directions, the sound systems should be generated. And so that uh, it will be possible to identify from, wh from, from which direction the sound systems is generated. This is, uh, this is one of the important area. And this is known as an haptics, okay. And already I mentioned that haptics is basically the information about the force uh, informations, okay. And uh, so uh, along with the force, it will provide you uh, touch information. Okay? And these haptics, it improves the, um, actually it improves the practical uh, aspects of this air and the beer. Say for example, a person is touching some object, Okay, and uh, you can see here in this figure, so there is an object, and this object needs to be grasped. Okay, and whenever a person is doing the grasping in a virtual mode, okay, the object is in a virtual form, but the hand uh, hand movement is in a real form, and whenever the person is wearing some sort of devices, which is known as a uh, exoskeleton kind of devices. And uh, whenever he is touching the object, he will feel one kind of force. And whenever the person is trying to hold the object with more amount of forces, then the haptic information will be more and more stronger. Haptic information will be felt. That means the touch information or the force information will be, will be magnitude-wise, it will be in the higher magnitude. So cutaneous haptics, which is essentially a combination of the light touch and the vibrations, did a lot of better feeling, better in uh, fooling the brain but into the illusion. That means sometimes uh, the persons get uh, get uh, uh, in a conditions of illusions. Okay, so he or she forgets that whether he is touching a real object or an imaginary object. So that kind of environment is possible to create in case of in case of real, real systems. And for that purposes, we require some sort of uh, additional devices, additional or additional systems, which will give a feel of haptic informations. It is now possible to identify at least five major areas of the application of the air in the industrial domain, like human robot collaborations, maintenance kind of work, assembly repair kind of work, training uh, product specific product inspections, training, and building of uh, monitoring systems. So that is possible to build up. Uh, using this technology.
I'm not going to this. It is possible to make uh, some kind of robotic systems or any machine systems in a cyber physical systems. Okay. And people have already developed uh, this kind of uh, machine systems, uh, robotic systems which can be used here in the VR applications. So this, this is one application area. Uh, this is an application area uh, where you can see a robot is doing some sort of pick and place type of operations and person is giving some kind of instructions by moving his hand movement. So the robot is practically speaking, it is following the movement of the human hand. And the person can see uh, the total environment. He is not located at the particular locations where the objects, uh, where the robot is placed. He is in a far remote locations, but at the same time, you can see the total environment and necessary instructions can be provided by the person on the movement of this kind of thing. Okay. What I will do, I will. Uh, Is it visible? One video, I am playing one video. Yes, sir, it's visible. Okay. So what the, what it shows that how the uh, how the assembly operations can be carried out by a new trainer and how the movement, uh, how the person will move his or her uh, hands uh, during the training operations. So one, what we can find over here is that at the bottom, there is a CAD model working, okay? And uh, uh, there are two markers are there. So you can see that this is one red marker, another is the uh, green marker. And this red marker, the green marker, one is connected with the right hand, another is connected with the left hand. And you can see that the person, uh, person is doing some realistic operation. So the person is moving his, his or her hands. And there is a camera which can uh, capture the movement of the hand. And then it is converted into uh, what I say that it is converted into the CAD model. So what we are finding over here, uh, these two hand locations, these are practically speaking, these are the CAD model. And these two CAD model is connected, the hand CAD model is connected with the, with the movement of this, uh, the uh, marker units. So uh, whenever the person is picking up some objects, okay, uh, which is expressed by the movement of his hands and the fingers motions, so actually uh, that is connected with the marker, detection of the markers, identification of the markers or picking up the markers. And the markers are uh, connected with some objects. So practically speaking, whenever the marker is moved, along with that, a particular object is moved and it is getting assembled into the CAD model. So once uh, here, through this virtual screen, what, uh, what, what is possible, that one can get a, get a uh, training, uh, training on some complicated uh, object assembly or uh, machine assembly process. And this assembly process, the person can do, do as, as many times as possible, it can be, it is possible to do it, okay? And because everything is in virtual form. And once the person feel that he has obtained proper training, and now he has confidence that uh, he can operate the, op operate the machines or he can do the assembly operations now, then this kind of training is not required. So what is possible, the person can have directly have all kind of expertise and experience working with the virtual objects. And once the training is over, that means the person has acquired the, uh, the necessary skills and, and now he can do the assembly operations uh, in a practical field. So there is no chance of making any mistake 
whenever the person will be engaged for the assembly. Otherwise, in most of the cases, the people at the very first time, they will always make some sort of mistake in the assembly operations. Okay, complicated assembly operation, it is not easy to do it. Uh, so um, the, uh, the industry people, they are using this AR and the VR technology, and this is the realistic application of this uh, AR and VR technology. Have you seen this video? This video is delivered. <laughs> I'm showing a video. I don't know that whether it is visible to you or not. This is uh, applications of this year in the beer and how this year in the beer model, uh, year in the beer can, can be used for constructing an environment. Artificially, you can construct an environment. So, This is visible. So, what I'm showing over here, you can see that uh, this is a platform. Okay. And this is kind of mobile platform. And uh, this platform, over this platform, there is a camera unit test. Okay. And this camera is known as a Kinect camera. And uh, this is the real environment where this platform is placed. And this platform is this platform is uh, uh, having a Kinect based camera. The three dimensional camera is located over here. And on the environment, okay, on the world, there are certain uh, markers are there. So this is a kind of marker. Okay. So on a paper, some kind of uh, uh, design has been placed, and this design location of this particular design is known to the systems. So in this way, at different different locations in the uh, in the environment, these markers are placed of different size and shape. Markers are placed, and whenever the system is scanning the total environment, these markers will be visible. And from there, the system is trying to reconstruct this environment in a virtual form. So this is in a real form is available, but uh, the systems can also create the virtual virtual environment also so what will happen in a this robot can move in a virtual environment the virtual screen can be developed from a real environment reconstructed from a real environment and whenever this particular platform mobile platform will move so uh, we can we can we can find that uh, it is moving in a virtual environment so let us play again so this is the camera unit this is this is the camera systems, okay. And then reconstructing the screens, whatever it is finding on the walls, okay, of the room. So with the, uh, with the images, it is reconstructing the total environment. So this is basically the scanning. And once it is scanned, the total environment is scanned, then everything is now placed in a virtual form. So these are the objects. What we are finding over here, uh, one box was placed. Okay, so there was a box. And you can see that this is the box. Okay, and now the box is represented by, the, uh, by a virtual uh, 3D model. So, uh, so the operations, the, the mobile platforms motions will be in a real form, but, uh, but it is moving in a virtual environment. So the environment will be virtual where the 
machines will be in a real real and the virtual environment is reconstructed using this ear beard technology so this is the reconstruction phase okay so many uh, images are there okay so one by one one by one you can see that there is the image and this image these are stitched with each other okay so there is a stitching process stitching is uh, will will take place and through this stitching process it is possible to reconstruct the total environment in the cad cad model from the realistic to the cad model it is possible so there is no need to develop the cad model okay separately so if you can scan the total environment in a realistically through some camera unit so from there we can reconstruct the cad model and it can be superimposed on your real environment so uh, ultimately you can see that uh, this is on the, 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 this is similar to the augmented reality where the machines of the equipments are real but you can you can superimpose some informations and these are the informations means the cad based models are the superimposed on a real environment This is visible. This is visible, I think. This is visible. Hello. Hello. Hello, this is visible. Yes, sir, visible. I'm not getting any response. Anyway. Older is visible, your video is not visible. No? is not visible window is not visible okay this is not visible picture Isn't shared to stop shared. Hmm? Stop shared. Huh? Stop shared. Okay. So. 
visible now this is not visible again no sir now visible thank you sir now, now it is visible yes sir it is visible now anyway Sharing the screen. Our hand tracking technique uses only a webcam and a color glove made of a stretchy lycra or swimsuit material. We can track the 3D pose and configuration of the hand. Our system is low latency and can track the fast 3D motion of this sequence. Here we show a prototype of a desktop virtual reality application. The user can pick up blocks, move them, rotate them, and stack them all in 3D. Our hand tracking technique uses only a webcam and a color glove made of a stretchy lycra or swimsuit material. We can track the 3D pose and configuration of the hand. Our system is- So what we find um, that the hand movement is taking place, again, the hand movement is taking um, in front of the camera unit and the camera is uh, grabbing the movement of the hand and it is the color screen okay gloves is a basically is a color gloves and accordingly it is tracking the movement of the hand and once the hand movement uh, we can track it then you can you can show it on a uh, on a cat software using some cat software you can you can uh, you can uh, orient the hand movements position the hand movements according to the realistic hand movement so so um, so this is possible it's, uh, the hand movement is possible and uh, track the hand Slowly. movement you can track the fast 3d motion of this sequence here we show a prototype of a desk here also the same thing that's uh, uh, this is a kind of uh, assembly operations and the person is practically speaking uh, getting some sort of training that how the assembly operations can take place and uh, just he is he is moving the hands okay in front of the camera using this wearing this colored gloves and uh, then the movement of the uh, movement of the hand is uh, uh, is uh, converted okay the CAD model movement of the hand of the CAD model. And there are some virtual objects are placed also. And you can see that the virtual object is picked up by the virtual hand and pick up from one locations and then placing it some other locations. So whenever the person see these operations, okay, wearing this head mounted display units, when it's, uh, he will find that the hand movement is taking place and the objects are picked up. Uh, then what he can understand that whatever the way he has uh, he has moved his uh, fingers okay and picked up the object virtually picked up the object so that sequence of operations was perfect one so for Top understanding purposes the application can, this ear vr technology is now using the user can pick up blocks move them rotate them and stack them on 3d here we demonstrate a more complicated so this is a complicated model of uh, some kind of assembly systems some components are there, okay. So here you can see the number of components are located. And what the person can do, he is just using his two hands and picking up the different objects. Uh, so uh, the right hand movement is connected with the uh, right hand uh, 3D model of the hand. And the left hand is connected with the left hand 3D model of the hand. And these two hands, this model hand, they can pick up the objects, the virtual object they can pick up. And either it can be used for uh, training of the assembly or it can be used for the disassembly purposes also. An example using both hands, where we explore and virtually disassemble the components of a disc brake. So components are here one by one, one by one. 
the components are disassembled from an assembled product. So just the person is getting some sort of training that how the actually the disassembly operations will take place. One by one components are picked up. So the way it has been done, it's a, a disassembly kind of operations. The same way also it can be used for the assembly purposes also. This is, uh, this is one example uh, where the environment is a real one, real environment. So the background, what we are finding over here, this is a real environment. And on this real environment, the virtual object is placed. So these are machines. Okay, so it has a certain platform. So white color one, this is the uh, platform on which a machine is placed. And the machine is movable. Kind. So it is a kind of robotic type of system. And you can see also there is a conveyor belt. Okay, so this is one is the conveyor belt. So uh, sometimes what happens, uh, industry, uh, say for example, there is an existing industry or there is an existing shop floor is there. And in the existing shop floor, the company wants to install some machines, new machines. So the question is that where the machine will be placed and how, when the machine will operate, whether the machine will have a collisions with the, some other objects in the environment, placed in the environment. So for that purposes, this AR and the VR technology can be used. And here you can see that uh, this, uh, this platform, this robotic platform will move, virtually it will move. And there is a conveyor belt. So there's a virtual conveyor belt. And there are certain virtual objects are also there. So virtual object will move from one end of the conveyor belt to the another end of the conveyor belt. And uh, whenever you will, uh, see this uh, wearing the head mounted display units, then you will have a real feeling that as if this particular machine has been placed in a real environment and uh, visualizing this total process, uh, you may get satisfaction, okay? Or you can, you can make a conclusion that if you install a, this kind of new machines in the existing environment, whether it will serve the purpose or not. We will also demonstrate to you that how this kind of applications models can be built up. Okay, so we will show it. So how this kind of robotic systems can be built up. Okay, and uh, it can be employed uh, for development of this augmented reality scenario. So you can see this is an actual environment. Systems is actual when which the virtual model are placed, and even uh, this virtual model you can orient it in different directions, okay? Even uh, say, for example, in this case, this uh, virtual model is as if it is placed on a, on a foundation, on a, uh, what I said, on the floor, okay, on the shop floor. And uh, it may happen that these particular machines may be hanging from the ceiling also, from the top also, okay? So you can also, you can also build up such kind of model. So instead of placing the bottom part, okay, foundation part, at the bottom, what you can see, we can we can orient it, orient it. Okay, so 180 degree, you can orient it so that this particular setups will uh, seems to be like in a hanging positions. So, and uh, this is called as a hanging kind of uh, robotic type of systems. And uh, during this hanging condition, also it can be programmed to move from one location to the another locations virtually. Then it can do the virtual operations also as well. Thank 
here are the top four reasons why augmented reality will optimize your manufacturing operations. Number one, increase manufacturing throughput. With AR, you can provide clear step-by-step -step assembly instructions and remote guidance to help boost productivity and reduce avoidable errors. Number two, accelerate training. As many manufacturing experts approach retirement, AR technology can capture and transfer their knowledge to the next generation. AR can also accelerate the learning curve of hires through real-time interactive 3D digital training. Number three, reduce costs. AR provides unprecedented clarity into processes and integrated IoT data enables quick reactions to problems and allows you to address issues before they occur. Number allows you to address issues before. So here you can see, um, this is the background is a real one. And on this real background, uh, informations related to some um, machines, conditions are placed. Say for example, 70.4 degree, then 87.6 degrees, etc. Okay, so these are basically the temperatures. So what happens here in this case, the machines is connected with some thermal sensors and the thermal sensors is getting the reading from the actual machines directly. And this is in real time. And then this thermal reading is now, uh, it is shown as a virtual component on the, on the real screen real environment screen. So at any instant of time, if somebody, if, if, if you say, for example, if you are looking into this particular uh, environment, okay, so whatever the reading you are finding over here, that is the realistic reading, is a real time reading, and this is the on the spot, on the spot reading at that time. So that is the beauty of this uh, augmented reality. So for that purpose is to get the exact readings of the different conditions of the machines, we must have a sensors. And as we say that, uh, uh, that um, say for example, on the back side, you can see that 44% it is written like that, okay. So there may be, maybe, uh, maybe uh, this particular information is indicates that uh, with the 44% efficiency, the particular machines are- no, Is it visible? The screen is visible. Yes, sir, so it's with, visible. Yeah. So with the 44% efficiency, that particular machine is operating. Okay. And uh, so we understand that um, in case of a virtual reality systems or augmented reality systems, in case of an augmented reality system, so, uh, the data or the information, whatever it is showing. So this may be a real information, okay, real-time information, or this may be an information which is already stored corresponding to the particular equipment. So whenever we are we are just clicking a particular point on the real screen, then whatever the information attached to that particular point, it will be displayed over here. Before they occur. Number four, improve operator efficiency and safety. AR provides step by step instructions for everything from assembly processes to machine setup, changeover, and maintenance. Real time visual directions reduce the time spent interpreting instructions, improve productivity, and enhance overall worker safety. Augmented reality enhances the entire manufacturing process from improving throughput to accelerating training. Reducing cost. So it can show over here that um, whenever, say, for example, somebody is uh, opening a machine, okay, and uh, it may be a kind of complicated machine or maybe a, some kind of dangerous machines, okay. So it will always, always it will show uh, with the light, okay, that uh, which portions are the dangerous, okay, which needs not be touched. So this kind of also information it can be displayed. Uh, displayed to the person if the person is interested to get get about the details about that particular machines and this kind of information is very much it is useful whenever a person is doing some sort of assembly operations or uh, whenever the person is doing some kind of maintenance kind of operations then uh, the maintenance process may be 
the maintenance process will be displayed uh, in front of the in front of the person in virtual form and uh, just by reading the informations one can get the what one can know about the process that needs to be followed for the uh, for the inspection operations or for the maintenance kind of work so and improving operator performance ar will change the way you do business learn more about the power of augmented reality from it okay In the image guided therapy business of Philips, one patient every single second somewhere on earth is treated with one of our products. So that's 28 million patients a year can be treated because of the work that we do here. That was the big reason I came to Philips. Image guided therapy is modern day surgery without the incision. We're navigating tiny instruments through the body through incisions no larger than a pencil point. We're relying solely on x-ray images or medical imagery to guide us. So that means we are always looking at a screen of data. With HoloLens, we can take it to the next level. We are a leader. So uh, this is the work that has been done in our laboratory. And you can I just play from the very beginning. So whenever a person is uh, doing some sort of movement of the hand, we can see that the virtual object is also tracking the real movement of the hand. And already I mentioned that uh, this is possible using this uh, Kinect based camera unit. So it has a lot of flexibility to do like, so um, it can it can easily, it can detect the location of the object or it can identify the human and accordingly, uh, accordingly it can track the movement of the human. Okay, so the body structure is divided into number of links and number of joints are attached over here. You can find out over here. And uh, so the movement of the hand is practically or movement of the leg or movement of the head movement, body movement, et cetera. These are all can be captured using this uh, camera unit. And uh, ultimately what happens you, uh, through this CAD model, you can, you can leave the, the original person's image and you can play with the, with the virtual object in the form of a skeleton data, skeleton informations, and uh, oh, the important sir, sir. screen is not visible, sir. Screen is not visible. Okay. Uh, we can see your folders only. Yeah. This is visible? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So uh, we can find that the movement of the movement of the person can be detected uh, uh, with the help of a camera units. So actually the person is doing the hand movement of the leg movement, the body movement in front of the camera. And this is also Kinect camera. And the body is divided into number of parts, number of components, and uh, in the form of a link, and the links are connected with each other. And this is just a skeleton. And one can, through this, one can identify that how the person was doing certain activity. Okay. And uh, this work means, uh, these applications generally it is connected with some sort of, uh, we generally call as a biomechanics related activity. Say for example, working of a person. So whenever the person is working, whether the working posture of the person is perfect or not, so how to identify that one. Generally, uh, it is possible to do it with the help of this, uh, this Kinect based camera units. 
uh, which identify the leg movement and the head uh, and the hand movement okay in a realistic form and say for example for this particular posture you can find out that what is the orientation of the first link what is the orientation of the second link the third link the fourth link like that okay so in this way the leg movement also can be identified in the form of some links and uh, whenever these links orientations are calculated mathematically you can find out so what is the orientations of each and every every part of the link and from there it is possible to identify whether a person's particular posture uh, whether it is uh, it is conforming the biomechanics uh, biomechanics part of it that means biomechanics means a gate which is known as a gate pattern so whether the working pattern of a person is following the normal gate pattern or not so sometimes the person sometimes uh, say for example a person has a pain okay on the leg part or maybe at the foot part and generally the doctors uh, it is very difficult for the doctors just by seeing from the outside that what is the reason for the pain and if the doctor asks the patient to work okay and at that time if the images are captured and such type of virtual models working models of the people uh, can be created can be generated by the system then from there the doctor can easily the doctor can identify that what was the exact leg configurations or the positions was there okay and from there the doctor can say that whether this particular leg configurations is uh, is uh, means uh, as per the gait pattern of the human working normal working or this is a kind of some abnormal working pattern and because of that abnormal working pattern pattern the person has a pain on the leg portions or the foot portions so it is possible to identify so even if you can move even when the person is moving in the front on the back you can see that the realistically the three dimension the the uh, link structure of the configuration that is also moving so you can have a depth information this camera has a depth information from there we can find out what is the depth of the persons okay with respect to the camera camera setup okay you can see that uh, um, in one form the same same person who was doing uh, some sort of hand movement in the laboratory so he is standing in the laboratory okay and there is a virtual object and this is a uh, avatar model virtual object model is there now you can see that the virtual model okay it will follow the movement of the original person's movement so let us play this one so here in this case the virtual model the avatar model this is following the movement of the real object and the real object movement can be tracked by the camera unit and then accordingly that information is transferred into the virtual model and the virtual model will have a uh, different type of configurations and generally in the movie uh, this kind of avatar model are used okay for making the movie purposes so maybe the person will uh, the uh, the concerned persons will be located in a uh in a uh, safe environment and he will do a kind of hand movement of the leg movement he will do it and we can see that the virtual object will object will follow the movement of the uh, human one and by this way okay uh, generally the movies uh, one can we can create the movies okay and where the movement some of the movements of the virtual objects uh, may not be a realistic one
say the person is bending okay he, the person has bent in the forward directions and it may happen that one particular uh, means when the person is moving in the forward direction uh, his body may not be in a balanced conditions okay so the person will fall on the floor so it will happen in this case also this is visible yes sir okay yes sir okay, i will this is also visible yes sir okay so uh, here you can see that uh, the person is moving his hands the real hands and there is a virtual object and this virtual object uh, is practically he is just identifying the uh, the virtual object or matching the virtual object with the real object and this is a teaching process this is known as a teaching process and when the teaching process is over okay and then uh, then you can see that uh, even when the the person is moving his hands okay so at that time that colored object that colored hand will be able to track the movement of the uh, movement of the person's hand so it is a kind of uh, tracking process and uh, on a real environment the virtual object is placed and you can control the movement of the virtual object uh, virtual object also so the virtual object is tracking the movement of the real hand okay any real object can be tracked that means any real object can be tracked only only uh, the thing is that uh, you have to teach the marker accordingly and here the marker marker is uh, taught or marker is it is basically it is positions with the actual hand and you can see that the person is moving the hand actual hand is moved and you can also at the same time you can see that the virtual object is also moving okay so it is tracking the real objects let me once more play with that first process is a teaching process okay this is a kind of mapping process so it is uh, the virtual object is the hand is the virtual object over here means the cad model is the virtual object and that is uh, the real hand is superimposed over the virtual object so first one is the teaching process so once the teaching process is over okay so the real hand of the virtual hand they will become as a single unit like and then uh, even when the real hand will move then the virtual hand will track the the positions of the real hand so with the help of his uh, left hand uh, whenever the, he found that both his real hand and the virtual hand has been mapped properly then he just click a button on a computer okay so this is just it is a kind of acceptance acceptance process okay and uh, the system accepts 
the real hand of the virtual hand as a single unit. And now you can see that uh, the person will move the real hand and the virtual hand is getting it tracking, get tracked. And even the folding also, whenever the, whenever the, you can see that the finger is fold, okay, the five finger systems. So the finger is fold, uh, then automatically the folding is also taking place on the virtual object. So, so the virtual object has been built up with a number of digits. So in our finger systems, we have a digits. Okay, so there are three digits are there in our finger systems. So in the virtual model also, there, is, there are digits. Disease has been built up. And these digits, they are just following the virtual digit, is they are following the real digits. Or we can say that if this is basically the tracking operations. So finger are moved. Only thing is that if you move the fingers at a very faster rate, then sometimes the tracking may not be a proper one, okay? Uh, because the uh, movement of the hand and the, uh, and the computer generated uh, uh, CAD model pattern movement, okay? Uh, so there are a lot of, uh, what I say that the frequency uh, uh, mismatch is there. And so you can move our hands, you can move our hands at a very faster rate. But whenever we are moving our hand and if it is required to be tracked by a CAD model, then the CAD model is doing a lot of calculations, okay? Because the geometrical calculation is going on at the background. And these geometrical calculations may take much more time than the realistic movement of the hand. So that's why sometimes it's may, it may happen that if you move your hands at a very faster rate, okay, then at that time, it may not be possible for this computer generated hand to track your hand movement. It may not be possible. Hello and welcome to this Unity package that is called the Robotic Industrial Dynamic Arm. And uh, if you go to the main scene, if you have this seen is visible? No, sir, please share your screen. This uh, package. So you have different sliders here that are represented by the degrees of freedom of the system. And whenever you move them, you are able to move the robotic arm. So we have that movement here. Then you have the other degree of freedom, that is this one here. Then you have the movement of the upper arm. I'm sharing the screen. Hello, welcome to this Unity package that is called the Robotic Industrial Dynamic Arm. And uh, if you go to the main scene, if you have seen, you will be able to launch this uh, package. Not visible, sir. So you have different sliders here that are.
स्क्रीन शेयर Hello and welcome to this unity package that is called the robotic industrial dynamic arm. And uh, if you go to the main scene, if you have seen, you will be able to launch this uh, package. So you have different sliders here that are represented by the degrees of freedom of the system. And whenever you move them, you are able to move the robotic arm. So you can see that uh, this is a machine, so the robotic arms, and uh, which which has a number of uh, joints and links. And if you wants to create a virtual model, and if you wants to have an experience, wants to get some sort of experience that whenever you will move some sort of sliders or button, then how the joints will move. Okay. So to understand that, that uh, you can create a virtual model, and this virtual model. Uh, in the virtual model also you can have some sort of keys and the keys can be moved and accordingly the link will move and you can see that the realistic sound is also generated by the systems so the movement of the joints is associated with some sound okay and accordingly whenever the joint particular joint will move the sound system will play and this makes uh, the virtual systems almost it looks like real so it is a complete it is a virtual virtual system it's not an augmented reality it's a virtual reality vr model but this vr model whenever some person is wearing this glass okay will look into this particular screen then the person will have a realistic feel and even he can operate the knobs or the buttons and accordingly the movement of the machine will take place so we have that movement here then you have the other degree of freedom, that is this one here. Then you have the movement of the upper arm will be the part three, uh, part two, sorry. And the part three is the one that contains the grips. So you can move it also. And finally, you have the grips themselves that are open and closed like that in order to grab things. So um, we're going to quickly explain how the package works. So first of all, um, the robotic arm is composed by the part zero, the part one, the part two, the part three. So it consists of number of parts. So each uh, game object is inside a parent. So this will allow to uh, make the movements uh, properly. And uh, regarding the left grips, uh, they don't have any interaction with the uh, objects outside. You will have to, die, to do that yourself if you want to pick up objects, etc. You can add a box collider, a rigid body, whatever you okay. So each of the controllers is composed by a text. And uh, if you go to the actions on value change, we are calling to the robotic rotate that is this script here uh, so, so what, what i will do means uh, we will also demonstrate to you uh, that uh, how such kind of system also it can be developed okay so in the practical sessions we will demonstrate to you that how uh, this kind of uh, robotic systems they are modeled okay and uh, they can be controlled in a uh, virtual reality environment So with this, uh, what I can do that I will end right now. And, and uh, I think the next sessions, it will be uh, uh, taken by one of my students, Saptak Bhattacharya. So he will conduct the practical sessions. And initially he will go through the Vphoria software tools. Okay. And uh, then he will explain that how the Unity uh, software toolbox are used for making the virtual models and the augmented reality model. And then after that, we will take up again uh, another uh, means uh, another side of this air in the beer, which is uh, which is known as a what I say that uh, uh, the informations of touch and the information of force informations. 
and uh, this is called as a haptics okay so we will again we will go into some demonstrations of some haptic devices so sapta will also uh, demonstrate uh, that how well, what is known as an haptics and uh, the how the haptic devices are used okay and uh, how a person will feel or experience when the haptic device is connected with the ar and the vr systems so one has to make means ar and the vr systems uh, we find that unless and until the different sensors are attached with this uh, ear in the vr systems then the feeling of the persons may not be a realistic one okay so how to make the systems more and more realistic so that is the challenging one so i think uh, now shaptok can continue okay uh, and uh, he can